All right, hello and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever today may find you. It's so good to see you and to have you here. So um, thank you so much for joining me. Just making sure everything is squared away and uh, good to go. I want to say thanks for joining me. And uh, yeah, let's get this party started. Uh, hello, uh, Bobby Blakely's in the house. Stony Braswell, Froja, Andreas, Steve, Jan in the house. I did some of this earlier this week, but I had like so much fun with it uh, that I want to share it with you some more. Uh, yes, happy fancy Friday. And yes, I did change my shirt. Gotta love the buffalo check. All right. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you join me elsewhere, I want to say hello as well. Um, so thanks for being here. Hello. Okay, cool. All right, let me share my screen. As you can see, we'll jump in here. Uh, waiting for some files to sync, uh, just so you know. And uh, it's taking some time, but let's go ahead and jump on over. Zoop. Here we are in good old Photoshop on the iPad. So hopefully you're into this. That's where I'm going to start out. Let me just reorganize this a little bit. Maybe make myself a little bit bigger. And uh, you should be able to see that, again, I'm just like working on my iPad like so. All right. So, hello, hello. Happy Friday. Awesome. Where is? There it is. Also using Apple Pencil. So I'm jumping in here. Um, kind of waiting for a file to sync. Uh, let's just jump into this one, for instance. All right, pretty straightforward. I'm in Photoshop on the iPad. And again, I did this a couple a couple days ago, but I'm going to do it some more because I think this is going to be very fun. Right here is uh, currently my design. Right, in fact, you can see it right there. And uh, we're going to do some hand lettering in here. So I'm going to add a new layer, and from here I'm going to write out some words, and I'm going to do that. Uh, a number of ways. There's so many different ways I could do this. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Michelle. You are too kind. I could use a brush, right? I could grab any any brush I want in here. So these are some of the um, brushes that are already built in, right? We'll use pressure for size and not pressure for opacity, but I can come in and just do like chaos. Oops, why is that so transparent? Let's up the opacity. Chaos. Right, so just some quick hand lettering as you can see. Uh, where's this design from? I don't know. I think I got it off of Adobe Stock. Yeah, that's, well, that's where I got this one. Um, so the cubes don't matter so much as... Uh, as does the fact that there's a bunch of squares back there, just so you know. Um, I could show you how to create those squares, by the way. I've done this before as well. But, yeah. Uh, I would create these squares probably in Illustrator, just so you know. Right, so, so the key thing is, is we need to have a colorful background because we're going to steal colors from the background. So that's the idea, right? Um, we could take a look at doing this. And again, I did this on the darn desktop. Let me switch back over really. Oh, what's happening over there? Oh, what is that? What are those hidden messages? I'm actually just doing some, um, of course, some beta testing around the new features. But here I am on the desktop. So I could actually use something like Illustrator to make those squares. So I'll do this, right? This is what I'll do. I'll duplicate this. Boom. Da -da 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 right? Take this. Take it down like so. Da -da 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 right? So I'm making all these squares. Uh, that's how I do it. Make all these squares, right? Take all these squares, and I want to uh, use a couple different swatches to colorize these. So I'd come over here and I'd select my swatches, right? Just by holding down 
the uh, command key, I'm selecting a, a bunch of different colors that I want to use. Uh, let's throw a blue in there and a teal, right? So I have about eight or so colors. We'll go to scripts. I'll do random swatches fill. And I know this is a Photoshop masterclass. Don't hate me. But random swatches fill, we can now fill that completely with all of those lovely colors. So that's actually how I would uh, make a pattern like that, right? We'll move this over. Uh, I could do the same thing again, those same colors selected, right? These other colors, let's go into scripts, random swatches fill on this side, right? And that's how we can make all those lovely squares that we can then sample and do, use smudge brush with it. Right, so that's what I'm doing. Making all of these, running the scripts on it, right, and we got to have all this randomness. From there, we can copy this and bring it into Photoshop, into a new file, why not? There we are, paste it in. We're gonna paste it as pixels, right, just like that, and now we have our squares. There we go, okay? Here's another way to make a cool pattern, okay? Oh, good. Thank you, Michelle. You love how I'm using, and that's why I, decided, I started the design masterclass, just so I could use different tools. Uh, but obviously, it's going to be different for the Photoshop one. All right, so let's do this. Let's do File New. Let's try this. I will just do 100 by 100 pixels. You ready for this? We're going to do that again. We're going to do it in Photoshop, right? So we, we just want a plethora of colors. So I'm going to op open up my gradients and you wanna go out to just grab a legacy gradients because that's where you'll get all of these nice ones, right? And from here, I can go ahead and, let's create a new layer, by the way. Click, we could add that, we could add this one. Like, I love these lines, but this one gives me lots of colors. Okay, look at all those colors. In fact, if I double click on it, I can change this from linear to something like reflected. So I've just doubled the number of colors in here, right? Another thing I can do is I could do angle. Um, I like diamond is what I'm ultimately gonna go to. Reflected is cool and then diamond, right? Right, so there's my uh, diamond design. We'll click OK, we'll hide those squares. This is actually 100 by 100 pixels. So the reason I did that, let's go ahead and just rasterize this. And scale it down 50%, like so. We'll have one up there one here, one here, and then one here. And uh, from there, yeah, let's invert some colors. Let's take this command U to hue shift it to something else, right? So again, just generating random colors that I can then tile. That's all I'm doing. Invert <coughs> hue. I don't know, change to something like that. So we have that done now. Let's take this and let's make, let's actually turn this into a pattern. Uh, define pattern. So that's what we'll do. We'll do colorful. And it will look like a pattern, right? I can probably do some more randomness, but uh, let me know. Uh, that's a great question, by the way. Actually, I'm asking, I'm asking myself a question. Like, how would you do randomness? And there is a way, and I have to dig it up because it's been a while, but how would you generate random, random colors in Photoshop uh, like I did in Illustrator, right? So that's the question. So uh, I just think that's something interesting to think about. All right, so let's go to patterns. And here's my, here's my pattern, like so. Let's jump over back to this design, new layer, add that pattern, and now we have a bunch of craziness. Right, so now I could use these two. Let's just rasterize this layer too. Let's save this file, and again, we'll call this 
diamonds because I already have too many things called colorful, but I have those two layers now ready to go. Marsha's in the house. Marsha, you are never late. You are right on time. And that goes for everybody. Wherever you're at in life, you know what? You think you're behind, whatever, because you're looking at somebody that's, I don't know. You just, you're at the right place where you're supposed to be right now. So uh, that's all I have to say about that. Save the diamond. Uh, don't worry about saving that. So that one should sink. It might take a second. I'm gonna switch back to my iPad and get to painting and all that fun stuff. All right, so while that one loads, we'll go back into this file, right? We did that, we did that hand lettering, right? I'm gonna delete that layer, just add a new layer, and I'm gonna use the smudge brush this time. Smudge, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Kevin's in the house, what's up, Kevin? So here we have this, and I'm gonna rotate my canvas like so, and I'm gonna write a bunch of words kind of in the same spot, and then we're gonna put them together in Photoshop on the desktop, right? So again, a combo today. So chaos, using the smudge tool, we will go up to the options. We're gonna sample all layers and we're gonna use pressure for size, which is what I used previously. Uh, the pressure for size, that is. We're going to make the strength 100%, and then we'll just like play with the size, but we'll be at about 80 pixels. So now we can just jump in and just do H. Uh, let's undo that. Let's even undo this. There's going to be lots of undoing. <laughs> New layer, turn off this previous one. And then the S, let's actually move this over. Take this, move it over. Cause I can't even fit chaos in this space right here. So again, let's move that over to the side, throw the S in there. There we go. Chaos. Taking this, we could actually merge down. Now we have that one word all set up like ready to go. So that's what I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that a couple times with this phrase that I'm gonna write out. I'm gonna do is. New layer, turn that off. I could have done, let's do that on the same layer is a friend Wait for it. Move it over. There we go. There we have friend. Chaos is a friend. And this is not my quote. It's actually Bob by Bob Dylan. Do of real fast. And then I'm gonna show you how to replicate this on the desktop. Mine. There we go, we got it. Just some quick hand lettering, right? Pretty easy. All right, so we created this. Maybe we'll, you know what? Hey, we'll even complete a design, but really what I'd love to do as well is use Illustrator here as well. And I get it. I, I've, 
We're using multiple apps, but I'm gonna do this anyways. Create file really fast. We could also do this on the desktop in Photoshop. But jumping in here using the pencil, uh, we will turn off color there. And uh, I even need a different quote at this point. I need a different quote cause we're gonna do something else. We'll do, I'll just do this really fast by the way. Here we go, there it is. We'll do. I want a few strokes. There we go. Let's take these. Here we are. Shrink it down. New layer. Why not? Find your fire. There you are. Quite simple. Just some quick hand lettering. I could do some guidelines to make sure every that baseline is all synced up. But what I need is I need a vector path. And I'm like, okay, I could use Illustrator to do that. Right, there it is. Save that, right? This will be find your fire. And we'll use those in Photoshop, right? And again, we could also do that on Photoshop on the desktop uh, with a mouse. But it's so much easier if you have Apple Pencil, right? All right, guys. I love to see great things happen. Oh, good. Khalid, awesome. I'm happy to teach you some things and uh, even getting myself into a jam. That's probably what's going to happen, just so you know. I'll be like, what am I doing? Uh, I'm going to open up. my colorful design. Let's transition over. Okay, where the heck is it? That is the big question. Ugh, get out of the way. There we go, let's switch back over. Oh, make sure you close your files. So I don't have this closed on uh, in Photoshop on my iPad. So I'm closing that, that's now called Colorful, right? I could even rename it or duplicate it. We have Colorful Copy now. But those are gonna sync. Now I can go to my desktop, right? Oh, so sorry about that, now I'm on my desktop. All right. I need to remember to use several programs at once just to really make your brain hurt, you know? Make that brain hurt. Why? Why do we do it? Let's sort by name. Why is this, why is it not coming in? If something isn't coming in, I know for me, usually it's uh, my Creative Cloud login. Like, ugh, that is the situation. Dang it. Oh, that is the situation. I just noticed. I'm so sorry, everybody. So, let's take this. Let's open this. <clears throat> and... Try to figure out how to share it with myself. Son of a biscuit. I just got to sign out and sign back in. So that's fun. Let's check my... Illustrator. So Illustrator. Let's go into App Settings. Account. There we go. So this is fascinating, okay? So I just learned something, and you might run into this, right? So the short of it is I actually have two different uh, Adobe apps. So on your iPad, you could be logged in 
as uh, under different accounts. So Photoshop can be under one account, Illustrator on your iPad could be under another account, and they both work just fine. On your desktop, you're always gonna have only that one account. So on your iPad, it can get awfully confusing. So now we know. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, basically on the desktop, you, you're only logged in under one account. Whether you're in Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, it doesn't matter. You're always under the same account. On the iPad, you can have different apps with different logins. And that's what I'm realizing that happened. So that's okay, because I'll do a file open. We did that Illustrator text. We'll open Cloud Document. Sure enough, there's Find Your Fire. Let's open this up. Again, this is just some simple line work. You know, and here we have this text, find your fire. Let's take it and let's bring this into Photoshop. Again, I did just some hand lettering in here. Create a new file. We'll make it larger, say 3000 by 2600. There we are, paste it in. This time we're gonna paste it in as uh, shape layers, paths. I should really bring in each one, each letter I should bring in separately, but I just paste this in as paths. So here's my work path. We will go ahead and save this path as find your fire. So the cool thing about this, once it's a path, we can then stroke it with some different tools, all right? Yeah, so Andreas, that's a great question. Yeah, can you share the project? Yes, I can. But my two accounts, I have a corporate and then a personal Adobe account that both are under the same email. So I just don't know if that will work. I could try it. You know, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's kind of silly. I'm gonna see what happens. There we go. I just invited myself. So if I get a pop-up on my desktop, that means that will work. So here I am in Photoshop. Here is my text. Uh, let's make this text larger, like so. And uh, let's see what we can do with this. First off, this I know this is going to be very complex. Uh, but don't forget. Okay, yes. All right. Son of a biscuit. Yep. I'm a, I'm a, I must be a 75 year old man from the South or something. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to take this text. I'm going to make sure I'm on my own layer right in here. And we can take this path and we can start to stroke this path. So let's go right up here. We can go to stroke path. Under stroke path, you get a number of options. So you can stroke it with a brush like we were doing before. In fact, what we could do <laughs> Don't mind me, take all the stuff, paste it back here. There we go. Stroke path with a brush. Simulate pressure. Hey, why not? Let's see what happens. Boom. Oh, horrible. Why is that horrible? Because the brush I chose and my color in the center are not that great. So let's change that to something like white or even black just so it will show up. And for our brush, it's just set to the default brush. So you do need to go in, select your brush first. We'll do um, uh, any one of these. We'll do a dry pastel soft square, number four. That's what we'll use. So it's like this. That's what it will look like. Go back in here. Stroke the path with our brush. Click OK. And there we are. It is simulating that pressure. So now we can see what that looks like. Again, this is going to take some work to get this to tie in just fine. <laughs> exactly, Mike. 
Son of a biscuit. Son of a biscuit eater. <laughs> so, okay, not that great, right? It doesn't even match our theme. Our theme's all about fire, right? So uh, let's do something different. Because I'm thinking I could probably take this path. Let's go in here, right click, stroke path. This time... Um, let's try this out. Stroke path, smudge. Uh, let's turn off simulate pressure. Uh, we'll check our, we'll take a look at our, our, um, smudge, uh, settings in a second. Well, it'll be revealed to us. And let's take a look. Smudge. This is what we need to turn on. Sample all layers. Even for this brush, we're going to go back up. We're going to select hard round. Uh, strength set to 100%. Right now that I have that set up correctly, I can go to stroke path, smudge, click OK. It'll go through and it will stroke it. There you are. So turning that off, that background, you can see Again, find your fire. Done much easier, because I have a lot of control in here. Uh, let's even take down the size to about 100 and try this again, because I think this is fun. We'll go to Pass, right click, select our path, stroke it the same way with our smudge tool. I just made it a little bit smaller so we can see that text to make it a little bit more legible. And there we are, boom. Okay, find your fire. Cool. Easy enough, that's showing up. Nice and neat, looks good. That was magic. Remember, I only outlined, I just scribbled text in, um, in Illustrator on the iPad just like really fast. It wasn't even that pretty, but you could see how gorgeous it has become. We're gonna try something else, right? That's gonna match the theme even more because this doesn't say fire. So can we use actual fire? Let's try it out. We'll go to our paths. This might be awfully messy because this is a, these are a lot of paths. Um, and I don't know if it's gonna let me do it to be honest with you. We'll go to filter. We'll go down to good old rendering. So we can render things along a path. So we'll go to render, we'll go to flame. Selecting flame. See, I knew this is what was going to happen. So if it's really large, it's going to say, hey, the preview is going to only show, say, the first 300 pixels. But actually, hey, it actually works out okay. So we can start to adjust accordingly. We could do multiple flames along a path. Remember, it's just showing that first part, right? But we could start to play with these settings. Like, there we go. Take that length down to 330. That's much, looks much more like flames. Multiple flames along a path. And it should be following the path as well. Um, notice how the, the flame is going the direction of the path, which is awesome. So with that done, we'll just click OK. Have it go through and render out that text. There we are. Hiding that. Find your fire. Right? And we have varying levels of success with this. Right? We're noticing that this N is not perfect, and that's okay. Let's go into our path and let's clean it up a little bit. Ultimately, I would really just clean it up in, um, in Illustrator. Because again, Illustrator is going to give you uh, the control that you need. Right? see what are some of the problem areas I'm kind of digging it though like I don't even mind the N we're gonna try some new things here right I'm actually gonna like experiment a little bit because this N was it doesn't have a lot of points so let's see if we can add some points to it and see how that changes the design 
because I have a feeling it might add more point, more flames based on the number of points, but I have no idea. That's why we're going to test this out. Ugh. Ugh, what am I doing? Use the direct selection tool. Zoop. Bring that in like so. Right? Bring that down. Whatever. You get the idea. Okay. Select it. Let's make sure we are on a separate layer. And let's run it again. Run it again. Can you save a path and use it later? Yes, you can. So look, this N is much more reasonable. But look, I, I have this multiple flames along a path. Why does it not quite look the same? So let's just click OK. Because I feel like that preview is lying to me or I'm doing something wrong. Anyways, so that N looks a little bit better. And there we are. Right, we want to add some more to this. We can do that all day long. Uh, you know, if you happen to have um, freeform pen tool, maybe you have a Wacom and uh, maybe you lost your pencil to your Wacom. We can do some hand lettering on the desktop now. Oops, undo that. New layer, hide. Uh, in this case, since I want to make a path, I'm going to make a path, right? So I don't really need this on a new layer. Maybe that's just out of you know, habit. And I'm going to combine shapes. I'm going to see what happens. This, let's just check this out. Let's go in here. OK, so let's try this again. There we go. Let's take a look at our paths panel and let's pull this out so we can actually see it. Perfect. This is exactly what we want. We want to have uh, everything. Oops. Let's do one. There we go. Some quick hand lettering on this work path. As it was mentioned, if you want to save it, you can jump in. Uh, first off, save, select all of the points. So come in here. I usually select them all. Um, and then from this flyout menu, this is interesting that if I click down here, there's not the ability to um, save the path. But make sure that path is, the work path is selected, and then you can go to save path. We can call this find. There we go. Here's our new find. We'll go and we'll stroke it with that flame. Checking the time, got 30 minutes. Muriel, thank you for joining me. There we are, let's crank this up. Multi multiple flames one direction, multiple flames path directed, but we want to adjust the angle. So there we go. I don't know, you can see it's getting ridiculous. There you go, it's basically going path directed um, giving me that flame along that path at this point. Click OK. We'll have that render out. Yeah, is the preview lying to me? Look at that. That's starting to look like a little bit like hair. <laughs> right? Because it's that angle is going along the path, so as it curves, it kind of spits it out like that. It almost makes it look like fur or hair rather than flames. Biola, let's complete five new projects in 30 minutes. Let's do it. But for this, what I would do is I would probably take this design, seems to be my best one, um, and start to clean it up. I love how random it is but I can still add some more random elements to it. So I can, maybe what I wanna do is I wanna jump in and maybe you don't wanna draw something at all, right? I know this is about hand lettering, but maybe you're struggling with that. You could outline type, uh, you could use the shapes available in Photoshop. So go to the custom shape tool, 
from this menu right up here. Yes, I already have this tricked out. I've showed this to you guys before, but look at all these awesome, wonderful uh, shapes that we have here for the custom shape tool. If you don't have them, just append default shapes and that will give you all of these. So then from here, you can just kind of jump in. I'm looking for a nice heart. Let's get a nice, pleasant heart. There's two of them. This one is the lamest heart I've ever seen. Biola, do you, do you agree? Like, who made these? I'm sorry. I hate to be mean, but this is not working. Maybe because it's a heart frame. I don't know. Use this one. This is more like associated with cards. Let's use this heart, right? We'll take that, draw it out. Uh, this is currently a shape, right? But I could, uh, anytime you draw a shape, you get the path for it in the paths panel. So like we did before, we'll save this path and we'll call it heart. There we are. Now from there, let's make a new layer. Don't forget to make a new layer. I forget that. And we'll render that out. Flames. And I'm going to do, I don't know, what should I do? Yeah, we'll go with that. We're gonna make something abstract, clicking okay. Yeah, it's crazy, but there's our fun background that I could potentially use. So bring that down, there it is. Make it a smart object, command L for levels. Nope, don't wanna do that. And I made a mess. So there you go, that's how you make a mess. Definitely need to have less flames here. We'll do, shrink it down. And I should be able to, can I cut? There's not, there aren't scissors in here. Okay, anyway. All right, uh, again, just another take. Again, find your fire, because what this needs, this I, I kind of feel like this needs a, you know, some variation, like some something that I can't put my finger on. All right, cool. Cool, almost look like a dragon. All right, find your fire. I think that's good, you guys get the idea. You can use the same, exactly right, Clarissa. You can use the same path as long as you just create a new layer. And this is what everything looks like. I start having all these different versions, different elements, different curves that I'd start, you know, sort of putting together, right? Uh, so again, just even taking a standard circle, heck, not even a, we'll just use curvature. We'll go, we'll jump in here, curvature pen tools. Click, 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 click. We can have an interesting shape right here and we'll just call this curve and we will light it on fire. Let's just light it up. Let's light up that curve. One flame along the path. This is what I'm talking about. I love this. 
this is cooler, right? This gives me sort of the shape that I want, right? So we'll turn this on, scale this down, right? What can I do with this? I can start to make this look like a heart. Um, by um, manipulating it, which I will do in a second. Let's, let's try another curve. Curvature tool, like that. So we end up making an abstract heart. Ooh, I did not want to put it on that layer. So you do need to deselect your current path if you want to, um, you know, make a new one. There are kind of like that. Escape, curve two, there we are. Probably adjust that a little bit more. Hey, let's just run flame on it. Last use process. Oh, that did not work. Because why did it not work? It cut it off. So let's scale this down and move it to the center. So when you run the flame on it, we're gonna get that whole flame. We have that curve. There we are. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. This time we'll just use the pen tool. We're gonna to make the bottom of the heart. Kinda of like that. Why not? It's all about experimenting today. Since somebody said my heart looked like a bottom anyways, there's your heart bottom. Boom, okay. Heart, ba boom, ba ba, shabam, shablamo, moving that down, curve, curve. It's getting hard to tell what's what. Start renaming some things. There we are. Cool. Are we good? I am playing with fire. Make it pop. Oh, yeah. Ah. You could assign uh, different colors to the flames. You could do all sorts of things, right? It could get kind of crazy looking. Um, I think for my purposes, this, this works just fine. Uh, I like how it's hard to read, deal with it. <laughs> but I'd say this one is done. I haven't even saved it yet. Let's save this project. Find your fire, baby. There we are, boom, done. Okay, I was doing all this while I was waiting for another file to sync. So let's see if it's if it synced. And I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong side of the screen this whole time. Now that I'm in Photoshop, let's throw me the other side. There we go. Pyromaniacs greeting card. Okay, so this is what I have to do. I have to actually log in uh, maybe do something like this. And uh, that's about it. Okay, so I just had to just kind of jump into my my email to uh, see if I got a notice, and I did not. So, all right.
let's jump in here. Let's do this. We made this one, that looks great. Let's close it. Let's go in here to this one. Turn this on. Remember I did this on the iPad. I'm gonna do the same thing on the desktop using the smudge brush. So, geez, chaos is a friend of mine. So you can see in here, so this is what I'll sometimes do, Carol and Biola and stuff. Like kind of depending on the look you're going for, I'll type in the text. I'll use like a, um, a cursive font, right? I'll use, I'll use a font that I like, I kind of want to imitate, but I don't, I don't want to like, I don't, I'm not trying to rip, I'm not trying to recreate it exactly, but I'll take a font, I'll like twist it and just kind of use that as a guide. So that's what I do in this case. Use it as a guide, take that down, and uh, go from there, okay? So that's kind of the text I wanna use. So that's what that is there for. We'll turn that off. We'll just go with a blank layer. Smudge tool, sample all, get layers. Finger painting, by the way, finger painting is gonna take whatever color that you have in your foreground, so if it's, say green, it will, uh, let's turn that on and it should do it. Oh, geez, hello. Oh, because the strength set to 100, we'll take that down to 26. Um, but it actually gives you this hint of green, a hint of, uh, of your foreground color, and that's what the finger painting is, just so you know. Okay, usually don't use that. I'm gonna turn that off. I crank up the strength. Uh, if you want a little bit of blur in there, then you're gonna use, uh, you're gonna take down the strength a little bit. But let's jump in here and see what we get. Uh, undo that, undo that. <laughs> I'm doing all caps. The color is based on uh, your initial uh, selection area, like your initial mark, that's where it steals that color from and uses it the whole time, right? So there that is, shrink that down, oops. Still needs to be a little more chaotic. So let's, Go into our brushes and our brush settings. Uh, size is going to be based on the pen pressure. There we go. That'll help out a lot. So that's, that's the one tweak I did to the basic brush. And I'm going to take this down to 90%. Strength's gonna be 90, so now it's gonna pick up even more of those colors behind it. It's gonna be a little bit blurry. We're gonna see if we like it. See that little bit of blurriness? It makes it look a little bit muddy, uh, which we could fix later on. You know, and what I mean by fixing later on, I would jump in and crank up the contrast. So I'd use something like maybe levels, and uh, just kind of like crank, crank up, crank up this all those colors. See, it was muddy. Now it's like not muddy anymore, right? So it looks like that will work. Um, ooh, I love that, Tim. That's awesome. Disco toothpaste. Let's do it. New layer. Whoop. There we go. O. Move that over. Throw an S in there. There we are. Nope. So there is a little bit of a lag. So when you get into this, Michelle and Carol and everyone, it might be a little bit of a lag. Um, 
That's just based on the speed of your computer. But I did two different layers just so I can do a little bit of overlapping like that. Chaos. We'll put those in a folder. We will throw some uh, levels. Why not? Right? Again, da da da. Clip it. Uh, one of my favorite new tricks, by the way, as well. Oh, I'm not crazy, but look at that H. Again, we can redraw this all we want. I love this trick, by the way. I put this in here, right? And then what I will do is I will change this blend mode for this layer. It's gonna, I'm gonna change it to normal. So normal means any effects, any adjustment layers you put in here is just gonna affect this layer group. So I don't have to worry about I just like how contained it is now, right? But I'm also not crazy about that H. So let's fix that, shall we? Chaos is a friend of mine. We'll save it. Let's try to draw that H again. Move that over. Smudgerooski. Man, that got bright. That is bright. There we go. That looks cool. There's our H that we want. Chaos. It's not even that crazy. We can make it look much more crazy. Uh, checking the time, I got five minutes. Cool, let's take this. Hey, you know what? Let's just throw a shadow on that. Okay, cool. Let's make it a little more crazy. That's what I need to do. So that is done. That is good. Let's get the rest of this because I only have five minutes. And since we have everything set up, Michelle and everyone, you know, the levels, the shadow, all I need to do is take this, drop it in that folder, and of course turn on the folder, but there's friend. And is A. Let's put that in there. Let's hurry up, people. I got a hurry of mine. Here we are. Yeah.
Yeah, this is our last stream. Shoot, this, I'm just realizing that. This is my last stream. Uh, you know what? For like a, uh, like six weeks, you guys gonna miss me? You gonna miss me? You gonna be like, oh, this guy. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going on my sabbatical. Man, you guys are, you know what? You guys are friends of mine. I don't know why I did chaos. But you guys are friends of mine and, uh, I'm still going to be around. You can still get a hold of me online and all that good stuff. So uh, I'll make sure I bring that stuff up right now. There you are. So stay in touch. You can see all of that, all of my info below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I get a sabbatical, everybody. It's been years in the making. I, was, I had two years to take it, and it came down to like the last couple of months. I'm like, all right, nothing's really opening up. I got to take it. So there we are. You guys are friends of mine. And uh, I appreciate all of you. So thank you so much for hanging out with me on this fine Friday. Feliz Navidad indeed. Thank you so much, everybody. You guys are friends of mine. I'll get this posted later on as well as my... There we go. Um, there you are. Super fun. Uh, shout out to Luke Choice, who's the creator of this, uh, this style, if you ask me. So thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to miss you already. Stay in touch online and through social media. Thank you so much, everyone. I will see you all very soon. Um, got Jason up next. Thanks for watching.